Welcome to Community Connections with Children's Services Council of St. Lucie County. I'm just one of your hosts, Sean Boyle, with me is Ashley Mark. And welcome to the half hour weekly radio program on our wonderful partners at WFLM 104.5 The Flame. And also, because of a great partnership with the St. Lucie County School Board, we are currently in the WLX TV studios recording this show as a monthly television program. It's very formal when we're here. We are very we're multimedia. Fancy. We are very much <laughs> multimedia. And you can check out WLX TV on Facebook, look up WLX-TV, and also jump on YouTube, which is where I find our show, <laughs> so that I can find out how many times I said the word um in the show. Do you count? No. Okay. No. I stopped counting. Good. Uh, Good. If you look up WLX-TV Community Connections, you can find all of our past shows, or if you're listening to us on the radio, and you want to know what these wonderful faces look like, with a word of caution, you can go check them out on YouTube. <laughs> you know what, though? It's a good place to find, and we've had conversation with people. If there was a topic that we covered several months ago, um, it's a good place to go back and get the information, get the phone numbers that we gave out, get the the name of the person who maybe we were talking to. And we have had people that have gone and done that. For... Can, I, can I be honest with you? Uh-oh. I did yeah. last night go on WLX TV on YouTube, yeah. and they have all the wonderful shows that they produce, and they produce a great they amount do. of shows. I looked on our show just to make sure that I wasn't going to wear the exact same outfit, <laughs> oh, exact same sport coat huh. from last month. I need to pay attention to yeah, that, maybe. I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> so, so what we do with this radio program is we connect you, the listener, and the viewer to what resources and ways for you to get involved in your community to help our children. Now, we at the Children's Services Council do five things for our community above and beyond this radio and TV <laughs> show. And those five things are, one, make sure every baby's a healthy baby, a little foreshadowing of our guest today, two, stop child abuse before it happens, Three, keep kids off the streets. Four, keep them in school. And five, keep them off drugs, alcohol, and other risky behaviors by offering programs and resources for all families in our community. Whew. Tired just talking about uh, all you that. You know, I had to have a <laughs> cup of coffee just to get through all of that. Just to get through those. So Sean talked about those priority areas. There's a couple different ways that you can learn more about all the programs in those five sort of categories. Um, one of them is on our website, which is cscslc.org. You can get a full list of all the programs there along with their contact information. We also have that information in these wonderful, thank you for, for bringing a prop, um, printed family guides that we distribute throughout the community. So these also have a list of all of the programs that we fund along with contact information. And some includes more than others for our after school programs. For example, we have a location listing for all of them. Um, a lot of our other programs are what we would consider more home based. So we don't necessarily list an address location for them because they will come to you. Um, but there is a quite a bit of information included in this. Um, oh, you're even showing the back. Hi. Thank you. I'm uh, full Vanna today. But we do have these family guides available. So if you have a business or a church or um, an organization location where these might be beneficial to your families, we can drop them off to you. You just need to give us a call at the office. Um, but we've distributed, we probably give out about 10000 a year, if not more than that. Um, but they really are a great tool. And we know we've distributed a lot to schools this year as we sort of are kicking off our back to school season, um, but they, there's a lot of information in here and it's really good for our local community. And you know, if you're new school, I'm, I'm used to saying old school, so I'm gonna flip it. If you're new school <laughs> and you're like, look, Sean, I that's don't want this printed. Yeah, this is, you know, these two full pages folded, that's just too much for us to handle. We want technology, we want to be in the know. We have an app we that do. has all this information plus more on it. If you go to the iTunes store, look up Children's Services Council, St. Lucie County. And of course, we also have that available for the Google Play Store, the Android store. <laughs> My personal favorite. <laughs> Apple okay. is your personal favorite. Okay. But there is a lot of information there. And I sort of, I, I guess I sort of gave it away. This We've gone back to school this week, which is a big time not just here in our community, but in my house, for sure. You know, we talked a lot about on the radio program and a little bit on the television show. Yeah. You have young kids. I do. I have older kids. Right. This is the first year where the first day of school, at least kid-wise, meant <laughs> nobody nothing was, to me. Nobody was going. Nobody was going. Now, yeah. I have a teacher. So, right. So, but right. I had a, she had a weak head start. Yeah, so it was a little different. But we did go back to school this week, and, and that really gives us an opportunity to talk about our out-of-school time programs that were busy all summer long. Um, but stay busy now that school has started. And we've got some new programs that we're adding this year that we're really excited about. 
Um, we talked a little bit about some of those on the show last week, but there is a list up on our website. So if you are still looking for a place for your child to go after school, um, please keep them in mind. They, we mentioned this when we talked about all of those programs, but it's not just a, a babysitter for them to have after school. They focus on academics. A lot of them have something kind of cool, either music or digital arts or media. Um, there's a lot happening in this after school program, so I'd encourage you to check it out. So a little weeds on how the Children's Services Council <laughs> runs and operates. Our fiscal year is October. Right. So come October 1, full-fledged, we're going to have three new after school programs yep. in our quiver of <laughs> options for families, if you will. Mm -hmm. One is being ended, which mm -hmm. we've had on uh, guests before. One is Sword Outreach, mm -hmm. um, and then the other one is Ignite Your World. Mm -hmm. Now, Ignite Your World is all about STEAM, yep. which is STEM with the arts part, right? right? STEAM? Yeah. Saying that yeah. right? Okay. Do you know what all those stand for? Because I don't. Science? No. I'm just <laughs> Wait, no. I, I could guess, but... Science, technology, engineering, and math. Right. I, I was going to say that, but we're on the education <laughs> channel, and, if, you didn't we, get and it if, we lost, if we didn't get it right, we would get called out. I so, understand. But... Uh, uh, they do these amazing things with robotics. They actually yes. compete in the very cool. robotics championship. Yeah, sure. Question mark. Um, and they do, and they did really well last mm -hmm. year. So we're excited to have them as an option for families to take advantage of. And we'll yeah. make sure that we get them on this radio program, especially when they get ready to kick off in yep. October. Uh, real quick, before we jump to this other thing that's on this list, I want to mention that I don't know if you realize this. But we are on social media. We, we are. <laughs> we are a little bit on Facebook. Yeah. I'm what? not going to lie. We are a lot bit on Facebook. We are a lot on Facebook. We share a lot of information on Facebook. And we have a lot of good conversation with our community on Facebook as well. So it's a good place to find information, to stay connected, to learn about things that are available. Um, we share a lot of information that yeah. way. And we're also on Instagram. We dabble in Instagram. We dabble in it. <laughs> CSC, SLC, uh, if you want to find us on Instagram. But I, I say, I, what led me to think about Facebook was because we want to thank everybody who came out yes. to take advantage of the summer movies. Yes, and that was a, you know, Facebook was our sort of place to share what movies were coming out. Um, we know that families attended because we have the highest attendance of any summer movie location for Regal Cinemas in the entire Southeast region. Um, so thank you to our whole Treasure Coast families that uh, participated. Let's put that in, that. in perspective. First of all, a <laughs> little insight. We're a little competitive at the Children's <laughs> Services Just Council. We want to be the best at what we do. Just a little bit. Southeast, that includes Miami. It that does. includes Broward and St. Lucie County and the Treasure Coast is number one. That's right. Um, we had, I think, the first couple of weeks I talked to the manager there, they were consistently seeing 1,000 people a day. So that was huge. Um, so thank you to everyone who participated or brought someone with you to go see those movies. There was a great schedule this year. There were good movies shown. Um, they are, they have wrapped up. This is the last week. So we're really excited for the partnership that we have with them and um, hopefully we'll continue. And as we talk about the wrap up of the summer, um, and it's, you can clearly tell that summer's almost over, right? We're wearing black, you know, <laughs> I'm joking. But uh, uh, I do want to thank all the families that came out for our book giveaway as well mm -hmm. at the Met Stadium. We were at all the Monday night games when kids got in free. Sometimes the weather cooperated, most times <laughs> it did not, but people still came out. And we were also at the uh, uh, back to school pep rally, which was great to see so many of our friends that work in yep. the education field. And a lot of them brought their families and got free books as well. So we wanna thank you for everybody that participated and please stay tuned because we have multiple book, hey. planned book giveaways coming up including lots of fun stuff to including come. some fun one i think we're trying to coordinate with facebook right oh, kind of yes. like a scavenger hunt you gotta pay attention though yeah. so. so if you haven't liked our facebook page <laughs> and really why haven't you at this point <laughs> uh, look up children's services council st lucy county make sure you like the page and, and again we post on there nearly every day yeah see how i brought all that together i like it you, it was a nice little package there you go do you want to introduce our guest who's um, waiting patiently yes i would love to um, so one of the first priorities that we always talk about, I feel like, is ensuring every baby is a healthy baby. And we really have, you know, you and I talk about this a lot when we're out in the community. We sort of have this network of programs that really serve our families in, in St. Lucie County from before the baby is born um, all the way until kindergarten. <laughs> you call it a network. Yeah. We call it a system of care. Right. I mean, that's like system of care seems. I know. It's, you know, I don't it's, know. It's our terminology. It's, it's wordy to yeah, me. Yeah. But, but it's a network of programs and they work really well together. Um, and they really.
sort of serve the needs that our families have from the day that baby is born until sort of yesterday, you know, you see the, the kids who are going to kindergarten for the first time, that's like when parents have that first huge milestone is when their kids enroll in school. So um, our programs work really hard to do that. And one of the partners that we've had all along the way has been Martin Health System. Um, and their mother baby home care program is really one of our outstanding highlights in that system of care. Um, and if we could give out gold stars, <laughs> they would be a consistent I, gold star winner. I agree. Um, and also, one of the programs I think that is most recognizable when we are out in the community talking oh, about um, our whole, you know, all the services that are available, everyone knows the nurses and the, the mother baby home care program. Um, they recognize that the program is successful here. Um, so it's one of the ones that we always like to talk about. So. We are really excited today to have with us Nancy Alonso, who is one of the nurses um, from Martin Health System that works in that program. Um, and we were chatting before the show started. Nancy and I actually had an opportunity to do a visit together once. Um, I tagged along to get some video and some photos, um, but that was five years ago. That yes. baby started kindergarten this week. So um, that was that was an interesting full circle moment. But, Thank you for joining us today. Um, I know you have obviously been dedicated to babies for a long time yeah. um, as a nurse in this program. I don't know if you want to kind of give us a quick overview of really what you guys, we were talking about for the show, you call it the fourth trimester, right? which is an important part mm -hmm. of that baby's life. Mm -hmm. So kind of give us a quick sort of overview of how the program works. Well, um, when they get discharged from the hospital, the nurse usually speaks to them the day that they're leaving to find out where they're going to be. She gets the directions, then we call them that evening or late afternoon the next day or two days after that. Usually within three days from being discharged from the hospital, we see mom and we see baby. And what are some of the things, you know, when we talk about this program, we talk about really specifically the health of mom right. and baby. But you guys do a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. So when you go out and you're really doing that initial assessment, what kinds of things are you looking well, for? Well, when we first go in, um, we go through um, a lot of services that they are offered and telephone numbers for easy access, um, numbers that they could put on their refrigerator in case of an emergency. Uh, then we do a full assessment of the mom, which entails blood pressure, pulse, temperature, if she's had a cesarean section, we look at her incision. Um, if she um, is uh, having any complaints, we right away will call the doctor and see if they can see them um, immediately. With the babies, we do uh, head measurements, listen to their heart and lungs. We put them on the scale to see if they're gaining or losing. And probably the number one question is um, about feedings. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when they're in the hospital, their milk is not in the moms. So when they get home, their milk is in. And so it's a whole other trimester, we call that, <laughs> because there's so much that can happen the first couple of days after they get home, whether it be the mom's incision, her blood pressure being up with the baby. Usually the day that we come is the day that the baby gets more jaundice, more mm -hmm. yellow. So that at that point we would draw the lab and then we bring it back to the hospital they run it stat and then they call the pediatrician with the results hmm. so it's done um, if we feel that it is increasing because a lot of times the moms go home after um, 23 48 72 hours and it's that initial visit that we um, see that the babies are a little symptomatic and joined us hmm. and I should say I mean we kind of you know, I think I already said it or implied it, but our promise to the Community Children's Services Council is is every baby born in St. Lucie County, a uh, St. Lucie County resident, within right. one week is eligible if they volunteer yes. and sign up for a free nurse home visit right. or a mother, make sure I get mother baby <laughs> home care. That's it. Uh, make sure we're on the same language there, but yep. a registered nurse will come to the home, check on the health of the mother and the health of the baby. And we know anecdotally um, 
from the reports from the different nurses, like for example, mothers whose blood pressure was high and right. preeclampsia and right. needed immediate attention. Right. And so we, you know, we have said that this program has literally saved mothers and babies' lives. I right. don't think that's an exaggeration, mm -hmm. but it's one of the promises that we have to all residents here in St. Lucie County. Right, and we see it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And now, I, I just wanted, when you said you go check on the mother and the baby, I'm just going to throw it out there. Are there any fathers that are hanging around? Oh, yes. Okay. Most of the time, the dad's at home um, because we go through a lot. They have a lot of questions. Um, they want to know that they're doing everything correct. Um, they want to be there to support the mom. And so when we go there to, say, help with breastfeeding, then the dad knows what he can do to help, you know, get the baby ready for mom. So, yeah, it's really family. We right. see most of the time um, families that have quite a few other children at home. And so with you being out there and, and checking on the health of the mother, health of right. the baby, helping dad get through <laughs> yeah. some of the stress, uh, or understanding what his role can right. be and is, and, and checking all that, you kind of give the family assurance, right? Kind of like, because it's important for us um, and again, not to get, I keep saying the word weeds today, but not to get in the weeds of our, of our line of work, but it's important that that right. family feel comfortable and bond right. as a unit right away. Right. That, that if that happens, then there are a lot of great things that are going to happen for that family moving forward. If, if that bond is kind of tenuous, right. they may not connect and it can lead to other bad and things we don't want to talk about. And then they know if they're having a problem. Mm -hmm. like, exactly. this is happening to me or this is happening to the baby, who should I call? Should I call the doctor? Should I go in? Um, do I go to the emergency room? Um, yeah, at least they have a telephone number from the pamphlet that we give them. And they call and then they do follow-up questions like, where do I go from here? Who would you talk to? Who would you, you know... Um, send me to or um, should I just call my doctor so well and yeah. one of the things you said too was that you you're there to assure them that they're doing it right right that they're doing a good job right and sometimes that's all a parent may need mm -hmm. in that sort of really important Absolutely. time frame is for someone to come in and say no that you're doing it right that's, you're good that's, right that's it that's why we weigh the babies mm -hmm. because sometimes you'll hear the mom say I don't think I have the mm -hmm. milk to feed my baby and then when you weigh the baby you realize the baby is gaining from when it went home <laughs> from the hospital and that makes them empowered like I'm doing this and I'm doing it correctly yeah so my babies are the youngest is 18 and 21 and I remember when my first child was born we were, she was born in Chicago suburb uh -huh. of Chicago they didn't have a nurse home visit <laughs> yeah man I wish they did <laughs> so so every when you said everything that you check on and common I was right. like yep we had that so issues with breastfeeding <laughs> yeah and that's very stressful mm -hmm. it is um, both in the hospital and when you return home jaundice right is very stressful mm -hmm. and so you know without this nurse visit program I, I feel and I, I'm relating because I I, like mm -hmm. when you start mentioning, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember those feelings. It is yes. stressful. It is stressful. And and as parents, you know, we send you home with no sleep. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Well, I was just gonna say, so labor for 21 hours. Yeah. Uh, came uh -huh. a month early, mm -hmm. so we weren't really ready. I was like mm -hmm. supermarket, super <laughs> super shopper, yeah. getting everything that yeah. we needed. Yeah. And then when you get home and and you read everything that you can, right, right. to be prepared, but right. all that's out the window because you're sleep deprived. Yeah. And you're like, oh my gosh, are we doing the right thing? Uh -huh. I could tell you an well, even funnier story, but it's more <laughs> embarrassing. So. Well, and too, you know, frequently the follow-up visit with the pediatrician right. is weeks out. Sometimes, yes. So the fact that you guys can get there in a few days. And they're very good because if we find something, they will see them much sooner. Mm -hmm. So for everybody that's watching and listening to the show, if you know somebody that's going to be expecting, make sure that they have it on their radar to mm -hmm. ask their pediatrician at the hospital to make sure that they get the mother-baby home care visit <laughs> or the nurse home visit right. or whatever you want to call it. Make sure that you have that signed up. So, you know, a lot of what we do on this show, and you kind of already briefly touched upon it, is to make sure that people that are thinking about using the service know exactly what to expect. Right. So let's go through... I just had a baby. Okay. Now what? What can so I expect? Before you leave, um, there will be a nurse that will come in and introduce herself that she works OB Home Care and she'll find out where you live and the directions and to expect a nurse to call uh, to set up an appointment. So before we come, they know um, that we're from Martin Memorial, that we have the baby mobile that we um, are RNs and we do um, just mother baby and uh, our names. And when we come to the home, 
we have our, um, you know, our little identification that has two little baby feet. That's how you know <laughs> that we come from OB. And uh, we usually show that to them before we come into um, the home. And a lot of times we do see them before we even get to the home, whether we're up on the floor helping with breastfeeding or doing discharge teaching. So they kind of feel familiar. They know who's coming to their home. That probably helps a little it bit, does. right? Yeah. It does. And then, um, like I said, home visits are great because you're in the comfort of your own home. When you're in a hospital, people are coming in and out. <laughs> Um, it, you might have a not, roommate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not comfortable, you know, maybe in the bed or in the chair. But when you get to your own home, nobody is dressed when we come to visit them. Mm -hmm. Everybody is in their pajamas because this <laughs> is what we're coming to help them, not to, you know, um, judge them. This is where we come in to say, okay, let's see how we can uh, make this transition smoother. A lot of times we uh, put together their breast pumps. Um, you know, a lot of times if they've only pumped in the hospital, their first time home, uh, we put the baby to the breast. And um, that takes a while, you know, skin to skin, and then we put them on the breasts. And that's why we do the home visits so soon after they go home, because they need that right then and there, not next Tuesday. They need it right then when the baby is waking up, being hungry, and then we can assist them. And it's great, because then they do end up uh, breastfeeding for quite some time. So. You know, and I think it's important, it was a, a little thing that you mentioned, is that when you come to the home, you're not there to be like, oh, it's home for oh, the no. or, or. We don't see anything like that. It's yeah, so yeah. funny. That is so unimportant to us. The main thing is um, that um, we sit down and really find out what you need help with. And, um, you know, we do go over fire safety. Um, you know, we do go over uh, safety issues with the moms. Mm -hmm. Like water safety, safety and crib mm -hmm. safety right, and all that. Right, right, right. And um, to take the CPR class. Mm -hmm. um, and they can do it after they deliver. Sometimes it makes more sense to them because they do have the baby at home. <laughs> so when they go to the class, all they of that understand. makes more sense to them. Um, and I think dads should go to that too. Because, and then if you're going back to work, whoever you're having as a full-time babysitter should also be certified. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, they can ask all a bunch of questions. I'm they write glad, them down. I'm glad you said that because I think that's one of the things that we always sort of tout as we talk about this program is that you, you're there to answer questions. Right. What kinds of questions are you seeing? Or uh, what, what's a normal question that people ask? What are the kinds of things they want to know? Ask about the feedings. Mm -hmm. They're concerned about the feedings. They don't know whether they should uh, wake up every two hours to feed the baby or they should wait until the baby wakes them up. Um, and now that all depends on whether it's a little preemie baby mm -hmm. or whether it's a, you know, um, uh, appropriate size, uh, you know, but to term. That, you know, that's a good point because if you are one of the people who have read all the books, yes. You're reading based on a normal exactly. situation. And if right. you're not in a normal situation, you don't know the answer mm -hmm. to those questions. Mm -hmm. Right before I came here, I just went to see um, a mom, um, just a mom, because the baby mm -hmm. is in the neonatal intensive mm -hmm. care unit. And, um, you know, at first she said, oh, no, I'll wait until uh, the baby comes home. But there's so many things with her health mm -hmm. that we needed to address this morning. And then she can go to the NICU to see the baby. But she really um, needed her blood pressure checked, her incision checked, um, different things like that to That's make sure. That's a good point. And I know, too, you guys have a protocol for if issues are identified, you yeah. will go out an additional time. Oh, we will, yes. A lot of times um, when the mom's blood pressure is high, we do go back for a second visit to make sure. Because usually if it's high and we send them in, they put them on blood pressure medicine. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that it's not too low or mm. it's not working at all because some medications don't work for everybody. Yeah. Um, with the neonatal intensive care unit baby, we always see them twice for weight checks and because when they get home, it's such an adjustment mm -hmm. for the whole family. Mm -hmm. And it, it, you know, it's such a, a peace of mind, you know, and, and I think it again is an example, and I know I'm getting grandiose here, but it's an example <laughs> of how much this community cares about its yeah. kids. The fact yes. that, because you know, if you go to you were telling us the story about a woman, I believe, from Maryland. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, first of all, uh, 
Nancy literally came off the streets from a visit <laughs> to come into the studio. I mean, so that's how important Nancy's this is, been right? Nancy's the streets this morning. <laughs> well, she literally came from a visit here. But uh, a woman from Maryland that this service is offered in Maryland. Right. I lived in Chicago. It didn't, was not offered there. I mean, right. there's a handful of communities, right. and we're fortunate that St. Lucie happens to be one of them. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what's a good way that parents can learn about this or expectant parents? I mean, is it just, I know in Martin, Martin Health Systems, it's just part of the natural protocol, right? Right, right. but wherever they deliver in St. Lucie County, um, those hospitals have their own program. So when they go in, they could ask if they are going to have uh, a home visit after they go home. Right. Mm -hmm. And then that, in turn, will start the program. Where they'll come up, they'll speak to her, they'll get the directions, they'll find out what day is good for her, and then they come that day. But they usually do it within the week. And, and I will say, you know, and I know we want to talk about something that happened last week. Uh, it's so important that anyone that's listening or viewing the show to be aware of this program and make mm -hmm. sure that you know, everyone that you know that is thinking about mm -hmm. having, starting a family or is getting ready to, that they're aware of the service. One, because it's free. It's at no cost to you. Two, um, Nancy already talked about how important it is and all the information that you go over, but it has literally saved mothers and babies' lives. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can think of no other call of duty, if you will, that's more important than that, mm -hmm. and, and to take advantage of this resource. Mm -hmm. So we had we have a superstar in the midst we right now. We do, and I was going to say, um, Nancy has obviously been a wealth of information, but you have a team mm -hmm. of nurses mm -hmm. that do this job. Yes. Um, so it's not like you're out there seeing all no, the babies. No, no. Yes. we got a um, big team. Yes, mm -hmm. and we had the opportunity last week to recognize another one of the nurses on your team um, with one of our Community Impact Awards, which is a really great opportunity for us to really highlight the frontline direct service workers that are out there right. in the community. Um, so Tammy Rubino She's the best. <laughs> was um, our award winner that we got to honor last week, and she was just such a phenomenal, I think, advocate for mm -hmm. maternal care in general. Mm -hmm. um, and we all teach classes, too. So. Yeah, and, and that's that. where you meet she the parents, did. too, before you go to their home, too. Yeah, she talked about what, you know, how many great families they get to meet doing yes. that, um, and we were really excited to be able to recognize her with that award. She brought quite the entourage with her. <laughs> Um, she was fantastic. I think she should win every month. <laughs> we can that make good. that. We can do a nurse every we month. Could, we yeah, can make we that could, happen. We totally could. <laughs> That's That's funny. So we just wanted to point out again, congratulations to Tammy and to all of the nurses. Um, we know you guys have a stellar reputation in the community. Um, we know from the, the information that we get on the program that it is working um, and the babies are healthy. Yes. So we appreciate that and all that you guys are doing. Thank you. And a big thanks to Martin Health System yes. who's totally embraced it. And, you know, like you said, it's it's the natural, it's the fourth yep. trimester. It is. It's yep. not, oh, by the way, it's just right. part of the natural mm -hmm. system of mm -hmm. care. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yep. thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> so again, make sure, I'm going to reiterate this, everybody. That everybody knows, every mother, every woman that's expecting, mm -hmm. and or whether it's their first child or their fourth child, mm -hmm. it's universal. Make sure that you take advantage of the program. And if you don't have, if you're not expecting, like me, <laughs> make sure, that you, you, make sure that you make this program aware to everybody that you know and love because it's so crucial mm -hmm. for the health of our, uh, of our community and obviously the well-being of our youngest citizens. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, we are out of time. Thank you for listening and or watching. It's a weekly radio program on 104.5 The Flame, a monthly television program on WLX-TV. We are multimedia. <laughs> Remember, it's our children, our community, our future. We're all in this together. We'll see you next time.